It's a criminal enterprise, that treasury. It is fraught with unconstitutionality and criminality. So entrenched and so deep and so far reaching. I can tell you, Yvonne, if there was anyone to fear, forget William Ruto. The fear is what are those forces that have taken trillions from us and are still are? Who are those forces? Those are the ones you should be saying I should be fearing. Because it's a criminal mafia beyond your imagination. When I watched Jimmy Wajigi having the interview with Yvonne Okwara in Citizen TV, I must confess that I actually felt like my body was developing goosebumps. Like I, I, I felt like, you know that thing that you feel inside like a panic? I saw like really a panic attack, but I was like, wow. Wow, in the, in the, in the shocking way. Not wow, like I'm celebrating something. First and foremost, I watched that interview very keenly. And the reason why I watched that interview very keenly, I've always watched everything that Jimmy Wajigi said because I felt it makes a lot of sense. You know, initially it felt like it was difficult to understand when he was talking about the ODS state, when he first started, because he started speaking about these things almost a year ago. He started speaking about the debt, the debt, the debt. And a lot of people were not getting it correctly. But I think during the demonstration, there, is, there was a lot of, in, during the Gen Z demonstrations, there was a lot of information that came out and people started speaking about it more cardinally now. And I think now it is very clear to so many people what Jimmy Wajigi is trying to tell Kenyans. Now, the thing that shocked me and gave me goosebumps was when he talked about a mafia in treasury. I was like, do you know when you talk about mafia, I begin to think about El Chapo, those kind of, uh, <laughs> I just begin to think about big, yeah. I don't even know how to say it. What you see in movies when you are watching um, action movies or you're trying to watch uh, movies that deal uh, with, let's say, things like uh, drugs or whatever. So, and I was looking at him and I was like, oh my God, there is something like this in Kenya. There is something in, like this in this country. There is something like this in this Nairobi. Because when you talk about treasury, you are talking about in Nairobi, you know. And I felt helpless. And I was like, so there are people here that look like me and the others that actually make sure that the common person in the village cannot eat, cannot even drink, cannot take their children to school, cannot access health care cannot be in a position to even live a dignified life. The only thing that people do is to go to churches to pray for a miracle. People that have held the, the, the system down to the extent that when you get a job in Kenya, you feel like there must have been some spiritual uh, intervention. As so I said, this year, 2024, is the year of revelation for Kenyans. Because this amount of information that has come in a span of a very short time, like this, hey, it cannot be anything but revelation. We are the most lucky people in the whole world, let me say so, to have received this form of awakening and enlightenment this subconsciousness, you know. And I cannot stop imagining and thinking how Kenya would have been good if we had people, I'm not vouching for Jimmy Wajiki, but if we had people that told us exactly what is ailing us, because sometimes it doesn't feel like it is clear, you know. But when Jimmy Wajiki mentioned it is this loan, borrowing was done. It was not approved in parliament. It was not focused on any project, you know. And some people somewhere, an organized group of people, are making sure that we keep paying this debt forever. 
sometimes he spoke about if you watch his videos more you realize beyond the conversation he had with um um Yvonne Okwara, you realize that actually, for real, he has spoken about these things for a very long time. In fact, he reached a point where he said, this money never came to Kenya. In yeah. And if some people somewhere decided to borrow money, uh, let people be fair. Let life be fair, you know. If you, some Kenyans somewhere borrowed money and they use it for their personal needs, they, that's a lot of money they must have invested somewhere. They need to return the principal, at least, even if not the interest. Because the issue of Kenyans not be, being able to feed is, is disgusting, let me say, to say the least. Even how do you call somebody to a table for a dialogue, assuming this issue of dialogue that has been flown all over the place, is something to go by. How do you call an angry person to come and sit down with you to, to actually negotiate anything? They will just be desperate. You can't even think, you know. You can't even be in a position to process anything critically. So anything comes, it goes. And anything goes. Like, it's just that for situation. So I am not vouching for Jimmy Wanjigi. But for once... At least he's pointing out where the problem is. Because we can't keep blaming on, oh, it's because of this politician. Now he actually stated that it is not even William Ruto that he was afraid of. It was that mafia in treasury because he was speaking out. And to be honest, if you've got a few people that could tell us what is ailing us as a country, because sometimes it's very impossible to understand why we cannot make ends meet for most people. It's not possible to really explain why people will pay, for example, NHIF. Now I'm hearing it's going to be SH, SHIF. And they cannot get access to um, health care. Somebody somewhere is sitting waiting to carry that money and siphon it away. It's, it's not possible to explain really why somebody can do that. And who is doing it for? Because you must be very protected for you to take that money. It's not just a common person like me and you that is taking that money. You know? So if we are having any conversation here, I'm thinking, if it is about dialogue, surely it cannot be when people have, are so angry. Like, they need first to reduce the prices of commodities, at least for the basic ones. Let people eat. And the people that bear this big burden are mostly women and children. I'm not saying men are not, but men are too. And this is where the problem comes in because, of course, there are more women in Kenya. There are more uh, females than males. And they bear the brand. And that is where the desperation comes in. So when they are addressing campaigns along the roads, they are on top of their cars trying to convince people, make more promises. I think the only thing that makes sense here now is how do we now uproot whatever is Jimmy Wajiki is calling an organized group? How do we now deal with it? And it would have been more gainful if somebody like Jimmy Wajiki brought out some names, like two Kenyans. Like, who are these people? Where are the names? Can we have some names? Because he must know a lot more. Like, it's not just what he's putting out here, like, on our faces. There's an organized group. It's a group is made up of people. There must be people. So who are these people? Really? Because I think what Jimmy Wajigi is doing, uh, I'm not saying that he's perfect. Of course he's not. But the fact that he was able to point out that so fearlessly, I think it is a good thing. And we need to give people credit where it is due. It is a good thing that he can stand up like that against his fellow political class. Because this is something that somebody like Raila Amolo Odinga should have been talking about. Should have been telling us. In fact, I know if his father, because he was part of the, the people that fought for this country, were to be here today, he would have mentioned them. Uru himself should have mentioned those people because he spoke once. I remember him speaking. 
And we Kenyans, because at that time we were not so politically alive, the consciousness had not come into us. We critiqued him so much. And to some extent, he was passing a message. Had he gotten the support, probably he would have done much more. I think sometimes we need also to give, because these politicians, you know, they need the political will, but we need to donate it to them, you know. We are the people that have given it. So if we are supportive of them, people like Jimmy Wajigi, for example, and I'm not buying his support, I don't know him from anywhere. I only see him in TV and YouTube. But if we, are, we give him that support and he's able to support us to go through that process of identifying who is this person that has put Kenyans, who is this person that has put Kenyans in this situation? Because definitely, we need to identify the problem. We need to really like look at people like that, the outspoken ones, without judgment. If you can be able to do that just one thing, it can help Kenyans to go a very long way. It's not like I'm advocating for debt, not paying debts, but it's just to identify who took the money. If they have stolen the money, Please return the money because it's not your money. People need to work to get their money, not to have shortcuts. People will be pronouncing millions and millions and millions. Money they did not work for. That is not supposed to be our culture. We are a Christian country. We are a very religious country with Muslims, Hindus, Christians, and other religions that respect what does not belong to them. And that should be our principle, at least. At the barest minimum, we should not be stealing what does not belong to us. It should not be our joy to come out and show a watch of, let's say, 100 million Kenya shillings. When somebody else in the village is only looking for 10,000 to eat for one month, it's not a good thing. It's only a good thing to the persons themselves, but it shows a deep-rooted problems within our conscience. The person that comes out to show those kind of prosperity, believe you me, is not somebody that is well. I don't know what you guys think, but leave me, the, leave comments, leave me some comments in the comment section below. It's a criminal enterprise, that treasury. It is fraught with unconstitutionality and criminality, so entrenched and so deep and so far reaching. I can tell you, Yvonne, if there was anyone to fear, forget William Ruto. The fear is, what are those forces that have taken trillions from us and are still are? Who are those forces? Those are the ones you should be saying I should be fearing. Because it's a criminal mafia beyond your imagination.